we'll bring it all together to give them a big picture perspective of what the aviation industry is all about. And as far as staff, I know you're going to be bringing some instructors with you who are part of the OBAP organization. Yeah. What is the commitment from Rebalt as far as there going to be staff required uh, from Rebalt to participate in the camp? Yes, we have two groups of people who will be helping. Uh, the ROTC, uh, First Sergeant Landrum, uh, will be uh, involved in this uh, exercise, as well as the small learning community. Uh, Ms. Erica Williams, they've embraced this, uh, this venture as well. So both of those uh, entities will have people on board during the same. Well, I was there last year and it was a whole lot of fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I can only imagine how great it's going to be in, again this year. What kind of things did you learn from last year that you'll be able to implement in this year's camp? The first thing that us as informal educators, we kind of have an idea of it, but until you actually see it, the kids have so much potential and ca capacity to do the things. A lot of times we don't give them credit for being able to do the things of more intricate or the difficult nature, but when we embrace that approach of just do it, there is no option. All of them stepped up to the plate. Uh, we also learned that with small learning centers and with the resources that were available to us, we've learned to bridge the gap to bring other areas that are not directly involved in aviation as you would involve, as you would initially think about it. We found ways to incorporate them in the programs too so that now we have a holistic approach to it where these kids are getting to apply everything that they've learned, whether it be the IB program, the business, finance academy, the ROTC program, they're getting to see where all these different aspects can actually impact or have a play a part in the aviation industry as a whole. So it, it seems like one of the big things that kids are going to get out of this is that aviation isn't just about pilots yeah. and airplanes. There's a whole lot more in the industry than the things they may have seen on TV. Very true. As a pilot, of course, we'd like to think that well, it's all sure. about us. <laughs> but the reality is, is, as they say, it takes a village to raise a child. And when you're in the business of building pilots, it becomes very apparent that it does take a village to raise a child because there's so many more aspects to flying than actually getting in the airplane. And there's so many people behind the scenes that make it possible for you to actually get in that airplane and fly it. And that is the big thing that we try and teach those kids so that they don't necessarily have to be pilots coming out of this program. There are lots of other things that they can embrace if they choose not to fly. So let's talk about the actual camp itself. When is the summer camp going to take place? July 20th through the 24th. Okay. And where? I know oh, you mentioned there'll be no several problem. different things. Where? Um, like the home base of operations will be out of the Marine Corps Junior ROTC program at Rebalt High School. Um, June 20th through the 24th, like I said, a huge portion of the camp will be field tripping and they will be touring a lot of different facilities with a lot of different organizations that will be putting their resources and their people on display for these kids to have access to. And the students or the participants, where, who are you hoping to attract to this program? I know I think Rebalt had a career fair. Did, was there interest in the students yes, to attend this yes, camp? Yes, we actually saw more <laughs> kids uh, signed up than we anticipated. Uh, initially. But we would like for, uh, for this to involve a number of our students. I think some of the students would like to return mm -hmm. from the previous summer and you know each one bring one. I think we're going to, we may have to reevaluate uh, exactly what numbers we're looking at afterwards, but that's a good problem to have. So is there a cap on the number of students that you can take into this camp? Yes, there is a cap. We've capped it at 30 this year. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we want to be very make very worries. We've made a commitment to Rebalt and Rebalt has made a commitment to us. So 20 of those 30 slots are going to come out of the Rebalt school mm -hmm. itself. Um, we've got 10 at large slots that'll pretty much be on a first come serve basis. But we have discussed, as Mr. Mm -hmm. Turner said, that because the demand is far outpacing our supply, we're going to have to reevaluate how we're doing it. But we've already got strategic planning in place to expand the program next year because as he said at that career fair we didn't tell them how many camp how many slots we had and they maxed out and we were only at the career for oh, an wow. hour. Oh so, wow. Yeah. Well that's exciting though. That's yes. very encouraging that there's that kind of interest in a field that we all well, I know that you and I really love. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting to love, Mr. Yes, Turner, I'm, I'm sure. Learning to love it. So, but that's really, really exciting. So the camp is July twenty through twenty fourth. You're looking to cap it at about approximately 30, 30 students. students. Yes. So I assume because Rebalt High School is the base of operations, are you looking for high school 
age students? Well, for the camp and the curriculum that we currently have in okay. place, you have to be at least 14 years of age for all of our insurance riders in order to fly, so that's what we're looking for. Like I said, however, as we reevaluate our strategic plan, we already have curriculums that are available to implement for age groups 10 to 13 and 6 to 9, but we'll probably put those into play next summer. But for this year, we're going to focus on the high school kids from ages 14 to 18 years. And so what, when does their day start and end during the camp? We see them, their arrival time is going to be about 8 to 8.30 every morning, and we'll have them for the full day. Um, we take care of the lunches, and we take care of pretty much everything that they need. All we're basically looking for is for the parents to get them there before they go to work and pick them up after they get home. And there's a window for each one to pick up and drop off. Right. Now, you mentioned that they'll be doing field trips and learning some fundamentals about what it, goes, what, what, what it takes to build an airport and some of the things mm -hmm. that happen around aviation. Will they get to get in an airplane? That will be probably, getting in the airplane will be the least of their concerns. They're going to fly, <laughs> they're going to get to see them, they're going to get to break them down, they're going to fly simulators, they're also going to get into the air traffic control tower. That's a new aspect to our program that we didn't have. The FAA is on a huge hiring spree to replace all of their controllers that are retiring. So we've embraced that and we've implemented curriculum into our program that allows those kids to get first-hand knowledge and exposure to that also. So yes, they will fly those airplanes, they but they'll do the tower to also. And I know, just because I happen to be part of the planning thing, that on Friday, in addition to some of the activities going on, there's something else that you've incorporated as far as applications and yes, things uh, like that. a new aspect of the program this year, and this is after talking with Ms. Williams at Small Learning Centers and Mr. Turner as the principal, we want to provide a pipeline for the kids. So every day, the kids will go home with homework, it won't, right. won't be like any homework they're ever <laughs> accustomed to doing, but on the fourth day, the Thursday, one of their homework um, activities will be a 20-question questionnaire. I'll ask them a bunch of questions, and when they're not flying or in the tower on Friday, uh, volunteers from each one of our sponsoring organizations, they've volunteered to um, provide us with an interviewer, someone that actually does the interviewing for real jobs at their college organization or institution, and the kids will be required to dress up shirt and tie or business attire to do an interview, a mock interview, and that interview will inquire to them about how they enjoyed the camp and query them about their aspirations for future after high school and what they got out of the camp and whether or not they thought anything about the academy was contributing contributing to their ability to make it to the next level. And what do you hope that they will walk away with from not only that interview type experience but the whole camp? I'll start with you. For me, for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think the big thing for us is for these kids and not just the kids, their parents to understand that their community, the Jacksonville community, is very much behind seeing their kids exceed and be successful and that is evident in just the number of organizations that have chosen to volunteer their time sources resources and their people to helping this happen and and also for their parents as well as the kids that there are millions of opportunities out there that are available to you if all you do is open your mouth or raise your hand and or say that I'm present and have a good attitude and we'll take your hand and show you all those different things and then you can choose from there what you'd like to do mr. Turner what do you hope that the students get out of this experience? I hope that they see that they're very capable, that they're very capable, and that there, there really are no limitations uh, in the world that we're living in right now. And if they just take that first step, take a chance, that they will see that in the end, they can be very successful and meet their obligations uh, as responsible adults in our country through something as, as in their face as aviation. Wow, what an experience that would be. Now, are you um, going to try to Join us for some of the activities. Well, I, I was. It's summer. I've been told that there's a weight <laughs> limit, so I'm going to try to lose a few pounds <laughs> before I'm I can get in it. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'd like to do is you brought along some of the instructors, so we're going to take a break for a moment and get your some of your instructors in here, so we can get some faces of some of the people that are going to be very close and working with the students. So. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more about the OBAT Summer Aviation Program. Hit it! Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own. 
Well, we're back, and I would like to take this opportunity, I want to give CJ the opportunity to introduce just some of the talented instructors who are going to be providing excellent experiences for our students this summer. So, CJ, you want to take a few moments and introduce your fine crew here? I would love to. Uh, these four individuals are four of the ten people that make up Team Jacksonville. Uh, the good thing about it is that we've all been associated through either college or right after college military pilot training and three of the four of the five of us actually work for the same airline, Continental. Uh, first is Reginald Nelson. He's um, also my fraternity brother. He's a former Air Force pilot. He's a 757-767 pilot for Continental Airlines. The next is Captain Michelle Scott. She is a C-130 pilot for the Puerto Rico Air National Guard. <laughs> she actually went to and attended Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and was a flight instructor there as well as taught the cadets at the U.S. Air Force Academy during the summer mm -hmm. while they were learning how to get their flying. Next I have Captain Jason Cockrell. He is a KC-10 aircraft commander as well as a 756 pilot at Continental Airlines with us. He also attended and graduated from Embry-Riddle University down in Daytona Beach, Florida, where he was also a flight instructor down there along with Ms. Scott. We have Major Brandon Acosta. He is also a fellow Continental Airlines 757-767 uh, pilot. He's also a KC-135 aircraft commander for the Florida Air National Guard out of Tampa at McDill Air Force Base. As I said, these are just four of the ten people that will be making up Team Jacksonville, and they volunteered to take a week off of their schedules during the month of July to introduce these kids to the wonderful of the aviation and everything that we have to offer. So they're all volunteers. They're all they're volunteers. All volunteer. So that brings us to something we didn't cover. How much is this camp going to cost the students? The camp costs the students nothing, and it's important to say that it's nothing because with the collaboration and all the in-kind resources that have been donated to the camp, it's pretty much about the equivalent of a $5,000 scholarship that each one of these students will be getting to this camp. That's incredible, and I, I'm just going to assume that they do it not only because uh, of their expertise, but because they love the ability and the opportunity to, to share their knowledge with other kids, to give them that exposure. Without a doubt. Each one of them has a wonderful story that they can share with you about how they've come up. And the one thing that a lot of people misunderstand is they assume that all of us as airline pilots, they see us at the end of the pipeline, and they assume that we were all straight A-B students who've never had a single hiccup along the road. And you're not? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Ooh, sure that if, when, you, ta when there, you talk yeah. to e any one of them, they can share their stories with you, and everyone has had their ups and downs, and that is yet another point that correlates with what Mr. Turner was talking about, learning to step up to the plate and understanding that just because you fall is not a bad thing. It's when you don't get up is when you and is when a failure actually occurs but like I said they'll all be available their pictures and their bios appear on our website that'll be up at the end of the month on www.obap.org where well, you'll have an opportunity to familiarize yourself with the people that are going to be present at the camp this summer well, Mr. Turner seeing such a wonderful group of volunteers what an inspiration this must be to the students that are going to participate in this camp yes and in, in a world that we live in where people are often accused of turning their back on young people. Here are some people who are saying, we're stepping up. Uh, you step up from your end and we'll step up from our end and together we'll be in the sky. And none of these folks are from Jacksonville, yeah. right? We're right. Everybody's from coming in from out of from state, out of state mm -hmm. to provide this camp mm -hmm. for these students. And but we do have some graduates um, from Jacksonville University that will be instructing at the camp this summer, and there are a few people that actually reside in Jacksonville that will be participating with the camp this summer that are members of our organization. Awesome. Well, we are out of time, and I want to thank Mr. C.J. Charlton, who is the Southeast Region Vice President of the Organization of Black Airline Pilots, yes. and Mr. Royce Turner, Principal of Rebalt High School, and our wonderful instructors of the summer camp. Thank you for being here. We look forward to seeing all of you July 20 through 24th. Go to the website, www.obap.org, for more information. Thank you for joining us.